Hello, everyone. Welcome to our monthly podcast with the one, the only Gregory Manorino, who needs no introduction, introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. And he's going to give us his low down dirty on the reset, the financial situation throughout the entirety of the world, his perspective, which we always enjoy thoroughly. Again, if you are new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow. As you know, Greg has over 20 plus years as a stockbroker in the financial world and was also in the medical world as well. And he's taken that uh, treasure trove of knowledge and applying it now in this community where it is direly needed at this critical time. Greg, how are you doing today, brother? Me? I am the one constant in an ever-changing universe, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> always good. I'm always good. I, I, I'm, I'm only good because of people like you, the people that follow our work here, man. That's it, man. That's all. That's all that matters to me, honestly, is making a positive difference in this world, just like you, bro. Yeah, well, you and I are, you're becoming rapidly one of my, our favorite, our guests, and I, I watch your podcast every day, every morning, as you know, and, and the same thing that you're saying is what I'm saying on my side. We need to come together. We're having the greatest wealth transfer in the history of the world, and the beautiful thing is we get to be a part of it and effectuate change in these respective communities, which is, I think you would agree, the most exciting. So Absolutely it is, man. I wish we had more people uh, who could see it as opposed to being you know, tricked and deceived and lied to yeah. on a massive scale. And But look, man, even if we can get through to one person today, we've done our job. That's as far as I'm concerned. I agree. God doesn't care if you save a billion souls or one. They're, each one is precious to him. It's not It's not quantity, it's quality. So I'm, I'm right there with you. So I know you're busy. So let's get it right out of the gate. Our friends at the SEC have decided to pee in the pool by... Uh, delaying XRP with a ridiculous appeal, which we know has no weight. They've already lost. And, you know, Gensler's going to play this game. But I want to share something with you and your audience, as I mentioned to you earlier on our screen, if you don't mind. Um, I just need to pull it up. Let me see if I can get it here. Just bear with me a second. Um, thank you. Well, I'm just, my thing is not uh, cooperating with me, so I need to get over here. So uh, let me know when you can see this. Uh, Ripple and Mercado have made a deal today to launch cross-border payments in Brazil. So that's pretty exciting. So they're obviously saying, screw you to the SEC. It doesn't matter what you do. We're going to work around you. Then we go to this other one here, which is very exciting, Greg. I, uh, I don't know if you can see it, the BRICS news. Can you see that? Or yep. okay. I got it. Absolutely. Okay. Now, you probably already know this. This is for the audience posterity. But on April 12th, India made a rather large oil purchase uh, with the to China with the petrol you want, but what people don't know, the kicker is, as you can see here, they did it using XRP, which proves the power of what you already know, how potent that that crypto is going to be. Why would the SEC be trying to stop it if it wasn't worth anything, right? So, you know, not 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 a surprise to you. And then I want to show you something else here, pretty cool. Uh, this is Nelson Chamisa. He is the ready to be made candidate in Zimbabwe. He's a fellow Christian. And uh, he's very keyed into helping that country rise. And he's hinting, he said one word the other day, Zig. So as you know, the Zig is backing a gold coin and token. So again, we see this, these moves and counter moves. Again, knowing it's not a surprise to you, I just thought it was pretty cool to share with our respective audience. So your thoughts on that? Well, you know, my take on the whole space, man, it's not going to change. I, I, I just, it's not as much as I get negative feedback, even today, man, I got mm -hmm. slammed by, for some reason, look, I get a lot of haters and I'm so, I'm sure you do as well. Oh yeah. I got a whole group of people who just hate gold and silver. They hate commodities. I mean, they hate everything. And then I got a whole other group <laughs> of people that, that just can't, you know, they cannot, and I don't. I don't blame people for this. They can't get their head around the crypto space. I was one of those guys many, 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 many years ago. Mm -hmm. Look, to me, look, it's just too easy. I look at the crypto space yeah. and I look at the market cap and there that that's all I need to, I need to oh. say, okay, look, this is a place where people need exposure, period. Right. I mean, you could sit in here and focus on minutia, but look, there's so many dynamics in play right now with regard to like, for example, the, the rise and fall of, of, of governments, of systems here. We are witnessing clearly the fall. And this is by no accident. This is a deliberate push uh, of central banks. Uh, they're, they're, they're destroying their own currencies by design. The U.S. dollar is in a, a tailspin that is absolutely irrecoverable, not because this is just an accident. This is mm -hmm. deliberate. 
People oh, yeah. don't understand what's happening. They they don't. And, uh, and unfortunately, look, you almost can't blame people either because look, this is the, the, the this vampire system that we have. Uh, it, it, it's it's this divide and conquer mechanism. People can't come together on any issues, and no matter what, because again, they they've been put in this box. They've been put in this box deliberately, so they can't uh, come up with any solutions uh, collectively to fix the issues. And these issues can be fixed, but people mm -hmm. uh, must be you know lied to, deceived uh, by the game. Unfortunately, the, the system to believe that look, they're done. Uh, you just got to kind of go with the flow here. And that's really a, a tragedy on, on a grand scale. But again, look, man, this is a no brainer to me. And I'm sure to the people that follow your work as well, if you yeah. are not getting outside a central bank issued currency in one way or the other, and I, again, you got the, you got the crypto haters, you got the gold haters. What do you want to do? I mean, you got to do, so, you want to stay in a central bank issued note. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. The, these people are going to exactly know they're going yeah. to lose. And I don't want anybody to lose, neither do you. I, no. What you and I are doing is say, look, I, look, I don't want anyone to be convinced because I say something or anyone says something. I want them to do their own homework and they come up with their own conclusion. Mm -hmm. People are allowed to have a different opinion. And those different opinions, we can come together with these things and then come up with possible other scenarios or solutions or whatever. But it's so impossible right now because of the current environment. Anyway, that's that's my take on it. No, I love it. So again, to respect time, I'm going to pack a couple of questions in a one scratch. So as always, you're so gracious to bear with me. You had a really important thing that really no one's talking about, Greg, and we've talked about this before. So it's posterity for you. But earlier this week, I think it was Tuesday, Japanese government led Fumio Kishida resigned. You see Japan is devaluing their currency by 25%. We know they're buying gold surreptitiously. And what a surprise, Greg. What do we have in less than three weeks? The BRICS summit in Kazan with 160 countries. So I'm going to ask you a two-part question. Do you think that they're tacitly or quietly just going to de-dollarize in a few weeks? And do you think Japan will end up joining the BRICS right around that time? Well, you know, look, man, th this is no secret, none. And this has been going on for so long. The mm -hmm. world is backing away, not just from the U.S. dollar, but the United States of America. We're hearing a lot of promises here out of both presidential selectees about how they're going to... Um, I don't care what kind of scheme they come up with, whether it's 100, 200, 500 percent tariffs or as on Trump's end. On the other end, you got Kamala, who just wants to throw hundreds of billions of dollars at it. These yeah. jobs are gone. I don't I want people to understand that the United States is a failed state. Unfortunately, the world, yeah. they don't want our products now. And no amount of bringing manufacturing back here to the United States is going to change it. All right. People think it's going to. It's not going to work. The whole world economy is cratering again at its fastest pace ever. It's not being talked about. The central banks, what are they doing? Ballooning the money supply. The, the dollar is in a tailspin, as I said. It's irrecoverable. It's meant to be that way. It's not by accident here as well. What comes out of this whole thing, look, what we're going to see as a byproduct of the failure of the dollar or, or the deliberate demise of it uh, and, and what's happening here in, in, in the United States is, and we're already seeing it. This We are in World War III. It's already started. Mm -hmm. um, this whole thing that started out there in the Middle East, it's going gonna, it's gonna to engulf many more nations, many more countries. We, again, th and then they're going to use all this as a scapegoat to, to say, OK, this is why the economy continues to fail. This is why inflation continues to rise. This is why this and this is why that again. You know, it's, it's astonishing to me how and this really bothers me a lot. I mean, I don't know about you. I'm, actually, I do. During yeah. the, the presidential debate and the vice presidential debate, not one question, not one word about monetary policy, mm -hmm. about what the Federal Reserve is doing, why both candidates are promising lower rates here, which is, of course, an economic destroyer, yep. along with the weaker currency out of it. Yep. Nothing. Not one question about it. Again, all kinds of other stuff here. Because if people, have, again, they've been so, if you were to talk about this stuff, it would enlighten people as to who's really running the entire show. They can't allow that to happen. But with regard to what Japan may or may not do, I wouldn't be surprised. We spoke about it last time. Absolutely. There's, in fact, I, I'd be willing to say it probably will happen. Mm -hmm. And then I would expect to see again, there's going to be, there must be, um, unfortunately, more human suffering. More people, you know what people are doing today more than, and I see this, uh, and you probably see the same thing. People don't, people have lost their humanity. They don't know who they are anymore. They don't know what they are. 
Mm. Um, this divide and conquer mechanism of not allowing people to come together, this fostering of hatred uh, mm. is all, again, all part of the system, this vampire system that's destroying everyone. And unfortunately, it's what's happening here is people are leading now, are leading themselves to their own demise. So what do they want to do about it? I mean, if again, I think most people, what they're doing, not people that follow our work. That's a fact. Again, people that follow our work get it. Mm -hmm. But most people are sitting back in some corner, sucking their thumb off because they have no idea what, what to do. And this is why you got all these haters with regard to gold and haters with regard to, right. to cryptocurrencies and regard to hate, hate to everything else. And that's why people are are, are able to do things to each other um, that, that would never be considered. If you if we lose our own humanity, our own self worth, then everyone else becomes worthless too. Everyone else becomes subhuman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and totally. that's why we're seeing this thing on a global scale. And and this is, again, none of it. This has all been scripted way, 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 way. Sound almost like biblical to you? Because it does mm -hmm. to me. And and that's where we're going. The, and there's just no doubt in my mind that, that unfortunately, we are being lied to, uh, deceived, and propagandized. And I, you know, it's interesting. Check the videos that I did at the end of last year. I said this was going to be one of my, I have usually at the end of every year, I do five themes. Mm -hmm. What I believe the top five things are going to be for the year moving forward. One of my top themes this year was more lies, more distractions, more deceptions, and more propaganda, all grouped into one thing. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. And war, expansion of war, currency devaluation, what central makes it there. I mean, it's like I look back on my old videos and I go, Wow. Sometimes it's, but it's too easy. I mean, it's not like I'm any smarter or we're, you and me, we're no smarter than anybody else. What we're doing is we're paying attention. We're connecting the dots. And if you can connect the dots, even just in a rudimentary way, you could pretty much say this is the most likely outcome out of what's happening here. It's just too easy in my view. And that, the fact that it is too easy does present a, an obstacle too, because if mm. being that the environment is too easy here, we realize that it's not going. It's going to end very, 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 very badly. So, people, what do they got to do? Pay attention to shows like yours, take action, and realize that there are solutions to these problems. But you're not going to be told about them. I presented. You know, I tell you something that's very disheartening to me. I did a video about a week ago where I I presented the title of it. There were solutions to these issues. It was my least performing video. In fact, it it was abysmal. People don't want to hear about solutions. I didn't realize that until that video came up. People are not concerned about solutions. They like where they are. And yeah. that's part of the system as well, bro. And um, I know the people that follow our, our work aren't like that, but there's so few of us. I wish, you know, people, hopefully they'll listen to this, what we're doing here, and they'll mm -hmm. share it. They'll get it out there. Um, let people hear this stuff because I can't imagine where they're going to get this stuff from anywhere else. Well, absolutely. And, you know, we can only do our part. And, and you know, also what I tell my audience too, and I'm sure you do as well as yours, Greg, is mindset. You know, taking action is great, but if you don't change the mindset. You've got it. What I just told my audience this week, a lottery mindset is a poverty mindset, right? Because our audiences are going to be blessed to the umpteenth degree. But the problem is that comes at a cost because everyone around us is the majority going to be in this attrition phase. And, and, you know, people say, how do you see it? And I say, how do you not? When you, when you see it, you can't unsee it, you know, to your point. Dude, it's so true. Absolutely, it's true. And uh, this it's the system, what it's doing to people. They can't focus on anything except survival right now. It's yeah. really become coming down to that, unfortunately. And this is a, a phenomenon that is sweeping the world. I'm sure, like me, you you talk to people all over the world because mm -hmm. of your blog. You you have that ability. And right. I, I people tell me all the time, Greg, you think you got it bad there? I was like, you have no idea what's happening yeah. over here, especially my European friends. I, yeah. I'm, they're, they, they're getting decimated. The United States... Mm -hmm is going to be the last one to fall here, I think, honestly. But it's accelerating. It's yeah. accelerating very rapidly. And the fact is that, you know, we can see what's happening here with the economy cratering. We haven't had a single piece of good economic news, honestly, since Obama. All they've done is inflate the debt. But this illusion of prosperity built on trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of debt buys a lot of illusion here. But again, there's, there's, there's a price to pay. And we're, we're starting to see it now. And the problem is when people think this is just going to slow burn, it's not. There's mm -hmm. going to be a moment, and I don't know what it is or where it's going to come from, where it's going to just stop. And pe that's why people need to now take action. Oh, I can wait. I have time. I'm getting, no, you don't. Do it now. Take action now because right now, this environment is ripe for opportunity to allow the system to work for you and not against you. If you wait till that moment where, again, no one knows where it's coming from. 
We already know the setup here, war, scandemics, where they're going to blame. They already have the scapegoats. Now that the scapegoats have been set, they can do whatever they want to. Mm -hmm. And this mechanism of currency devaluation, artificially suppressed rates, is going to push the market higher until I believe after the presidential selection, people, I'm telling you right now, I've been saying this for I don't know how long, all bets are off. We need to see where we go. And, and um, we, you and me, we're going to do our best to keep people ahead of the curve. That's that's what I want. 100%. I, not much I can say to that. You're right. I mean, it, we're in a 16-year cycle, almost reverse engineering is how I look at it. And uh, at least if we can give our audiences the things to look for, like these markers, like Japan, it gives them like light posts along the way in the path, you know, as we get to the finish line here so we can win. And we got to get people out of their, their individual mindsets of being in their own lane. We need to synergize and come together, as you've said many, many times before. They've um, been indoctrinated. And that's the problem. The, yeah. the institutions, the education system, it's all, in, uh, all of it. It's an indoctrination. And it doesn't allow people to think. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it strips away people's ability to understand that we have a God-given intellect. I use it every day. Yeah. I mean, you know, when something hits you the wrong way, you feel it. You know, right. I say, I always tell people that if you if you read uh, something or you hear me or you or someone say something that hits you the wrong way, there's a reason for it. Yeah. OK, that is, in my opinion, your God given intellect. Use it. it <laughs> you know, you've, you've been given a gift for a reason. People know right. when they when they hear the truth, they know when they're being lied to. Sometimes they don't say anything about it. And that's another big issue that we have here. Yeah. People refuse to call out or hold anyone accountable. And, and that's, again, with the media, with with uh, with politicians, there's no accountability anymore. They can do anything. They can say anything. And the people just sit back, unfortunately, and they just deal with it. Unfortunately, yeah. it's terrible. Greg, I know I want to say this before I go to the next question. You'll, I'm sure you'll agree and resonate. But uh, if we want to make something great again in America, how about humility and accountability? That's what we need to make great again. Absolutely, man. I mean, that's the way, and that's the key. The key is, you know, we got to understand, look, every Friday I say, love each other, care about each other, be charitable to each other. We we got nothing if we don't have each other again and realize that there is an almighty power that is looking over all of us here and, and will judge us for the things that we do. Whether you're going to pay for it now or later, you're going to pay. So just be very careful about how you utilize your time here okay yeah. if, if you're going to use it for a positive thing or a negative thing you again you it's there's no escaping it man and i think uh, i'm preaching to the choir here 100 percent. we serve a loving compassionate god but he also knows the heart and the bible says the heart is wicked who can know it so whatever we're trying to conceal is going to get revealed to your point so all of it man i mean you know it's just crazy but but unfortunately, you know, I think that's that's another reason why, I mean, you know, going off a little bit on a theological thing, why sure. we were in the shape that we're in. Yeah. It's definitely more, uh, it's, it's not just about the world of finance or everything else. Oh. Like people have lost their ability to understand that, uh, again, we're seeing, I get attacked every day by sure. atheists. In fact, I've had people come out and tell, I, I talk about God quite often on my videos. Yeah. And people say, well, Greg, if you mention that one more time, I am unsubscribing. So I'm like, Please do. <laughs> I don't. You see, people think here's the, here's the deal with me, and I, it's probably with you too. I don't oh. care about the volume of people that follow my work. I really don't. If I lost half of my subs today, I really wouldn't care because I want the right people here. Same. I, I don't. I, I, that's, it doesn't matter to me. You know, honestly, it really doesn't. If I'm yep. not connecting or you're not connecting with certain people, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's others that you can. All yep. right. But um, you and me and the people that follow our work, I really feel that we are unified. And that's why I want people with a like-minded uh, mindset to understand that, yes, there are solutions to these problems here. We can work together. And everyone, our whole system is designed to destroy us. And that's exactly what it's doing. And this is, again, no error, no mistake. Look at past uh, civilizations got wiped out. They get wiped out for the same reason, without even going more theological here. It's mm -hmm. always the same. And that's exactly what we're seeing now, the downfall. But this one here is involving, again, uh, it, it's, it's a wipeout. It's an extinction level event of, of the middle class here. We're going back to a neo-feudal system. And people, if they don't take action here, at least from a financial standpoint, and then make the right connections with the right people, right. it's over. It really is over. And people are marching themselves to the slaughter, bro. Well, we have, we have an opportunity to be on the right side of history. And, and that's what we're working to, to, the, to the middle, you and I, to do. 
Um, as you know, the Fed is planning two more rate cuts for the year. I think possibly one this month, but most likely November 7th. I know that you're going to say, and I, because I watch your shows, I know you say ultimately it doesn't matter, but it's another, it's another matrix or, or a, a marker for people to look at. Um, do you think they're going to do another 50 basis point and just take this thing off the cliff to zero interest rates? You think that's the goal here? You know, let's talk about that for a moment. Sure. The Federal Reserve, obviously, they're on a fixed course. No matter what, they're a, a fixed course to cut rates moving forward. And cutting rates obviously means further c- currency devaluation, just destruction of the dollar. Mm-hmm. And going back to what I said, I don't care whose plan is put into effect or who sits behind the resolute desk. They ain't bringing jobs back. It's over. Okay, now with that said, yeah, the Fed is is obviously running the entire system, the monetary system. They're the ones responsible for inflation, the economy, the markets, and everything else. So they got us by the throat. They're not going to let go. The more that they're allowed to inflate or they are called on to inflate promises of lower rates here means we get destroyed. And that's exactly where we're going here. The two biggest economic destroyers here are, again, uh, artificially suppressed rates of weaker currency. We need the polar opposite. We're not going to get it, unfortunately. Um, so what the Fed does, whatever they do, it could be 50. Uh, you know, if I had to go out on a limb here, I'd say probably not. I'd say more than likely it's going to be a 25. It could be 50 because look what they did last time. I thought it would have been more apt to be 25, but what they did simultaneously. I mean, I never saw it before in all the years I've been studying the Fed. They simultaneously released their plan. They said, okay, we're going to be cutting rates the rest of this year and next. So what did the market do? I thought the market would have been a sell the news. It turned out to be not so. Yes, we did finish lower on that day, not much. Uh, and the next day, the market took off over 600 points, referring to the Dow. Now, the mechanism here is to pump the market, to maintain the illusion. And it seems to me like nothing can get in the way of this promise of more easy money, oceans of it. And that's all that it does is the, this, the mechanism artificially suppressed rates and the weaker currency inflates the stock market, opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into risk assets. Cash comes out of re- assets that should be going into it, creates distortions across the spectrum of asset classes. too easy. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. But, but again, going back to what I was saying, you know, that's what they're going to do. It's, it's a destruction here. This institution is a crime syndicate of, I mean, not even, I always say of the highest order. I mean, the highest possible order. And unfortunately, we have no one here to help us here. We have two people here looking for the same position behind the Resolute Desk who are promising the same thing that the Fed is doing, which is our leading to our overall demise. Mm. All this other stuff sounds great on paper. Let's bring jobs back. Let's do tariffs and let's throw hundreds of billions at the pro- at whatever project. Ain't helping. It's not going to help us. We're done. Mm. I mean, what people don't understand. All right, let's just talk about, for example, let's talk about Kamala's plan. Sure. Real quick. Camel's plan is essentially this. Let's just throw enormous amounts of funds at whatever it's going to be, and that's going to fix the problem. No, it's not, clearly. And anyone that believes that is completely deluded. Now, with regard to Trump, he's talking about tariffs, tariffs, tariffs. What people don't understand is we already have tariffs, all right? Trump's tariffs, they were removed mostly by Biden. He kept the ones here on China. What did he do last year, at the beginning of last year? He started re-implementing Trump's tariffs. Most people have no idea. So most of that is already back. And look at our economy. Look at what's going on. It's not saving us. And 100%, 200%, 500% tariffs ain't helping us either. It all sounds good on paper, man. But if we can't have, again, the two fundamental factors to rebuild this, and it, should, it has to start somewhere. I think we might have talked about this last time. Mm-hmm. Whoever does the opposite of what central banks want, that is, central banks, of course, want lower rates. Central banks want a weaker currency, which, of course, makes them stronger. We turn that around. Whatever nation does that first is going to win. <laughs> it's that simple. And then, of course, we need to return to a sound money system. Duh. I mean, we've been promised this uh, a, a, a commodity-backed system. We got stolen from us. All right. And again, it's it's too much, man, what we're seeing right now and the, the whole nonsensical. I love crypto, as you know, dude. But to to say, you know, you got the crypto queen, with Kamala, she mm-hmm. adopted that from Trump, who's the crypto king. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Let's mm-hmm. make the United States the crypto capital of the world. Lovely. I'm all for it. But what about a constitutional capital of the world? You right. know, constitutional money capital of the world. Yeah. Can't happen. Why? Because it would hurt the Fed. And that it won't be allowed to happen. That's why it was not mentioned. None of this during the presidential debate or the vice presidential debate. They can't know. They can't allow people to understand that the Fed is the enemy. The, the Fed must be portrayed to be on the side of angels, bro. 
and that is leading to our own destruction. They're the government. They run it all. We, we just along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a matrix script, as you know. And the one word I have, Greg, as you were sharing now, bricks. They don't give a crap about what we're doing. They're moving full steam ahead. Less than three weeks, they're going to de-dollarize, I'm sure of it. And they got enough nations to do it. They understand, as you said, the U.S. should be doing it, but we're not. They're going to be doing it. Think about what you just said. What, let's say this does happen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a high probability. I, think I mean, so. it's already happening. We already understand yeah, the world optically. backing up of the dollar and in every, you know, across the board. But what right. this means is now the dollar is going to be obviously not needed as much or vastly mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to the value of it? Think about it. Now it loses half its value. Yeah. I don't know. You think we have high inflation now? Think of what it's going to be like then. I mean, think, think, look, we're being crippled here. Do you know? And that's why we're seeing more war. It's all ties together, man. And again, what are they going to say? Well, you know what? We need to attack this nation because they're doing this and they're whatever's happening. It's unbelievable, man. The whole setup is too easy to see. Once you see it, as you said, you can't yeah. unsee it. It's right. unfortunate, man. It really is. It is. But, it, but the good thing for us is that we see it and then we're helping our audience see it. And then if they're spreading it, you know, we can just, we can I do what we do. do. man. I really do. I, you know, we are, we're doing it. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Greg, because that brings up, if you don't mind, a sub question. So let's say they do drop the interest rates 25 and 25 or 150 percent cut, 50 basis point. It doesn't matter. It equates to the same. So you see bricks moving here, like we talked about, high degree of probability, aptly said by you. Uh, then I start to go, well, where does the dollar index go? Are we looking at 70, 80 by the end of the year, do you think? Dude, I, you know what? It's been in a downward spiral here. Well, you know, you can look at the index, and I, of course, I use and In fact, it's a calculation that I use in in the MMRI to base, mm -hmm. base risk. Yep. But um, but look, man, there's no stopping this, and 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 people got to stop thinking that there is a way to stop it. Not only is there not a way to stop it, this is being driven on purpose. Um, it's been going on for a very, very long time. Wherever the index goes, ain't going to be good. It's going to go down. How bad and how fast? Who knows? We just all know that we are paying the price for it. And there's no nothing here. We got, look, all we got is each other. We don't, unfortunately, we don't have a voice anymore. We don't have a say so in anything. Watching the fall of, 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 of this nation, the fall of the world in many ways, uh, it's a trap. And I've been telling people that you got central banks who have their bases in every continent on this planet. That's, that's their bases. And the war is against us. And there's no one here. Maybe uh, you said, maybe look, we'll see what happens with this, the BRICS thing. It's uh, it's kind of, an, it's out there. Things seem to be moving in a direction that I, I think is threatening mm -hmm. to the Federal Reserve and the dollar hegemony here. So, yep. I mean, what does it say to me? It just says, we're going to see something. We're going to see something happen. Uh, who knows? I mean, we're seeing it now. Um but pay attention to this stuff. It's important because whenever stuff is going on in the background, like port strikes or war over yep. there in the in the uh, Middle East, you know, Middle East and stuff like that, they did doing some other stuff behind the scenes. It's what they always do. Let no crisis go to waste. It's unbelievable, man. People are so easily duped and fooled and tricked and told about things that don't even exist, and they believe in them. I mean, the whole game, the whole politics game, I can't stand any yeah. of it anymore. It's just so it's fake. So um, scripted, you know, they're, yeah. they're experts at deception, experts at all. And, it, you know, it's unbelievable what we witnessed and what has we've devolved into. And we've allowed this to happen by no, not holding people accountable. It's amazing, bro. Anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I'm just trying to watch our time for you, for your sake. Um, I'm going to show you a slide at the end regarding the Middle East. So thanks for bringing that up. We'll, we'll wait to the end of the podcast for that. But, you know, as far as bricks, before we go on to our next question regarding precious metals, which I know all of our fans are, are ardent believers in, um, you know, you look at last week's UN General Assembly events, you had Iraq announcing that they're, they're coming back internationally, that they're going to, you know, peace and prosperity is the mainstay or the word of the day. You have many nations asking for debt forgiveness, right? Um, in national, you hear the talks of nationalization. It gets me to thinking that the BRICS is just going to do it next uh, this month and not even talk about it. They're just going to do it because they kind of tacitly admitted a week ago in the UN and your own stomping ground in New York that they're doing it. So there's some tell signs, telltale signs along the way to your point. Um, so moving to the precious metals, Greg, we've watched silver go over $32 mark. Uh, September 24th, that had a 5% increase, which I was, which was interesting. Um, and then you see the Dow going back, I did a little research for our podcast. Like it sounded like I'm somewhat cogent for you. Uh, we go to the Dow back to 2001. It was trading around the 10,000 mark, and now it's well over 40,000. 
near four times where it was. Now gold is about 10 times higher than it was and it's outpacing the markets. Do you see this trend continuing? And also with silver, how high do you think gold and silver can go? But now and over the, say the next year. I really honestly look when I when I think about the price action of, of commodities, gold, silver, more specifically, I, my, my take has been the same for a very, very long time. And when I look at gold, <laughs> silver or even cryptocurrency, I, I own all these things. I own platinum and palladium as well. Copper, mm -hmm. not too much, copper, but I own some mm -hmm. uh, of it. Um, I look at these in terms as almost as if like, OK, it's a hedge. Because if, what's going to end up happening here is obviously the currency devaluation is going to accelerate. It could be very rapid depending on what happens in other parts of the world, as we just discussed anyway. So what is that going to do here? Um, it, it's just too easy to me to say that it just seems like a no-brainer that although I do believe people, and I've been long this market for many, many years. Um, but in fact, I bought more of it today. Uh, everyone knows that I put it. I put it out publicly in my blog. I put it out in my newsletter. Exactly what I'm buying, what I'm doing. I'm an open book. Everyone knows that. Okay. So I just look at these things in terms of okay, where where's are things most likely going to go? Um, I would say in dollar terms, it just makes sense as the dollar loses purchasing power, commodities per, uh, priced in dollars that mm -hmm. the, the price action would, would be higher. How much higher is very hard to say. I just look at the end game. The end game is where's the bottom for the Dow. Um, I think we've spoken about this. Where's the bottom yep. for the Dow? We don't know where it is. We know the Fed jumped here at 6,000. I think the bottom realistically for the Dow is 8,000 today. 8,000. I still say we're going to get a one-to-one -one ratio gold Dow and then a, a potential 10 to one gold silver. I uh, mean, 15 to one. It, that's where it's going. I mean, I look at this thing upside down, backwards and sideways. I mean, I don't turn my brain off. I look at this stuff constantly. <laughs> Even if I'm not looking at it, I'm thinking about it. Right. about where, where things are going to keep. I mean, you and me, we have a pretty profound responsibility that we have people that follow our work and depend on us. Yeah. So what I want, all I want to do is put out things to people that th they can ponder, make up their own mind, and then do something. Whether they don't want to do something, they've made a decision, obviously, or do something, take action um, to allow this system to, to not destroy them. That's all it is. I want to give people actionable information and then provide them with solutions to what's happening. And I think that's what both of us are concerned with here. And that's what we're doing. That's why we're here, man. I, I'd be willing to bet that both of us really kind of probably have better things to do, but we feel a responsibility to our people. Yeah. That's my priority. Number freaking uno. Did I say that right? One. You did. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I'm sure this is to you too, man. You know, you, oh man, I tell you. If I'm remembered for one thing, when I leave this earth, like we're all going to do at one point, I want, I want to be remembered for a guy that at least tried to make a positive difference. That's it. That's it. You so even if I don't succeed at it, I want to be known as a guy who at least tried. That's it. More than you know, Greg, the, you know, we're, we're helping our families. We're becoming legends in our families. We're helping other people become legends in their respective families. And you're right. This is a, a massive privilege and a responsibility of this platform. And obviously, you and I both take it seriously, which is why we're galvanizing here accordingly. Um, so thank you for answering on that gold and silver, by the way. And I'm going to switch on a real estate question for you. And I'm specifically referring to residential because we already know commercials in the tank. That's all you got to do is look here in California, New York. That speaks obvious volumes. Um, but I had crazy, bro. Huh? We'll we should talk about that too, maybe another time, but we should talk more about that. Yeah, we oh, will. Now, if you want to. Well, we'll start with this because I only have one more question for you after this, but because um, we've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. But I had Peter Schiff on last week and he had said something to me that confused me a little bit. He had said that he believes that the real estate, meaning the residential, again, to be precise, market he saw going down between starting, you know, now here, we're actually, as you know, in the first, we're in the first quarter of the new fiscal year for the West. People think of the calendar year and I always delineate that. But he said in the first quarter fiscal and into the second quarter next year or first quarter, whatever you want to look at, how you look at it, 80 to 90% reduction in residential real estate, but he was saying gold and not the dollar. And I thought if the dollar was weakening and the gold was strengthening its position, that it would be the other way around. Can you kind of weigh in on that dilemma a little bit? Wait a minute. Peter said that he sees real estate falling 80 to 90%. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a pretty, that's pretty profound. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine a scenario that would drop that much. Um, mm. I, I, I do envision that again, there will be a, a, this whole thing. Well, look, what do we have right now? 
let's talk about the situation that we know because it's always about what we know and we can sure. speculate about what's going to happen. Oh, that's, if that's we understand funny. that we are going to see artificially suppressed rates, if Pamela just somehow makes it behind the Resolute desk with all her incentives to purchase new homes, what are they going to do? Obviously going to raise it. We have, we have lower rates. That is obviously inflationary to the price of, of, of a home. Weaker currency, obviously inflationary to the price of a home. Then you got the, what is she saying? 20,000, 50,000, I don't even pay attention because I yeah, really don't. I think it's 25. But it's a huge now. amount of money, first time incentive for buyers here. All it's going to do is push the price higher. And again, it's a bubble. I, I agree with Peter. It's epic. We're in an, an environment of, 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 of epic bubbles, inverse bubbles as well. Commodities are an inverse bubble. Mm-hmm. But, but, the, but the real bubbles people are looking at here, again, is... Uh, as everything else, obviously, the mechanism of, of, of artificially suppressed rates since uh, 2008 reinflated a stock market bubble of epic, epic proportions, a housing bubble on uh, epic proportions. Again, all built on the back of, uh, of the, the monster. The monster in the room is, of course, the, the dead market hyper bubble. There's nothing that con- this everything hinges off of that. Now, we could say this. All right. If we understand that at one point. We are going to get a spiking of, of a bond yields. Like people aren't going to believe a massive sell-off in the debt market. It's being built up right now. And the, this mechanism keeping rates suppressed right now is just going to make exacerbate the issue. A, 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 an out-and-out meltdown in the debt market uh, will have a profound pr- uh, uh, effect on the price of real estate. I mean, it's, it's going to be extreme. Whether it's going to be 80 or 90%, that sounds maybe too extreme in in my book. I wouldn't be willing to say, you know, what what I believe it would come down. But I would say we would be substantially. Everything is going to change. I mm-hmm. don't people under people just don't get it honestly. And I know Peter does. So I, I I know I know of his work. Uh, we've never spoken personally. At least I don't think so on on the phone or anything like that. And I think he's got a great perspective on a lot of things. I don't say I agree with everything the man says. Sure. And I'm not even overly familiar with things like he's saying like that. And maybe I should, I would like to watch the interview that you did with him. And I think I will, but look, the bottom line is the environment we are in is an illusion. It's not real. Uh, digits on the screen are going to evaporate. What we really have to think about what is going to happen. And we, I believe we've spoken about this too. We're going to get a locking up of the credit markets. It's going to mm-hmm. stop. The flow of credit or debt is going to stop. That was the real issue in 08. It wasn't that the stock market was crashing. It was that the credit markets were locking. Hence, mm-hmm. why Ben Bernanke went over there to Congress and said, if we no. don't lock billions into the system right now, we won't have an economy on Monday. It mm-hmm. wasn't the market. It was the fact that the system was locking up. We are going to face that again on a massive scale worldwide. That's the that's what's going to happen. There's going to be pandemonium in the streets. I mean, honestly, you know what just happened with Bank of America, right? People were, didn't have access to their accounts, all zeros. This is what's going to happen, man. You know it. I know it. I think everyone who follows our work realizes this, but there are people don't understand. I've been first of all, I've been warning about Bank of America for years. Bank of America, I believe, is going to be the scapegoat on Wall Street, just like they had Bear. And Lehman, okay? I think Bank of America is going to be a symbol here. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to fail uh, in the next meltdown. I, I've been telling people, get out. get out of the commercial banks, man. Put your cash into someplace else, somewhere safer. Nowhere is safe, okay? Credit unions, in my view, are safer. But again, look, what people need to just take away from yep. what we're talking about here with regard to real estate prices and the price of gold or silver or the stock market or anything else is they all derive value, derive, listen to the word I'm using, from action in the debt market, meaning that everything else could be considered a derivative because it derives value from the debt market. Debt market meltdown means the price action of everything is going to change. And it could be very dramatic. I don't know, maybe Peter's right. I'm just throwing it out there, but I just don't see it that extreme. Is it possible? I guess anything is, man. Let me tell you something. In this environment, nothing would surprise me. Absolutely nothing. Well, that's why I asked the question because it expands the scope of possibilities, you know, and I'll send you the video with Peter later on afterwards, but uh, last question for today, because it's the elephant in the room, we got to talk about it, then I'll show you the video real quick, you know, about the 45,000 port workers already on strike for every day, it's $5 billion to the system and a month in the supply chain, so even if it takes a week, 
We'd be looking at a seven month backup, which means it's gonna effectuate Christmas and orders. Um, obviously we've told our audience, I'm sure you're doing the same thing, stock up, just you know, be prepared, do what you can, help your neighbors, that type of thing. How, how long do you see the strike lasting and what, what effectuation do you see that having on, on the economy? Well, let's see. They shut down the economy during COVID and the stock market. <laughs> uh, there right. was a shortage of panic for toilet paper. Yep. Um, look, yeah. man, I think this is just, I think people are probably getting a little overworked up about this whole thing. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not a real issue here. I think it will give the Fed an, an, uh, an opportunity to step in here and th or anyone, throw cash at it, which is what they always do. Every crisis, mm -hmm. you know, that's all how we function. It's embarrassing. That's where we're a laughing stock of the world. We go from crisis to crisis to crisis, and they got to throw cash at it, throw cash at it, throw cash at it. I really don't believe this is going to be prolonged. In my, in my view, I would be, and I could be way off on this. And I'm yeah. telling you the truth. I see this probably getting settled sooner than later. Yeah. And if, but, but if I am wrong in that, and it does go on and on and on and on, of course, people look, what's the system designed to do? Cause people to suffer. They want to mm -hmm. laugh at us. They're going to make, they're going to, you're going to see the shelves get cleaned out from toilet paper again, probably. Yeah. Uh, or something along those lines. Maybe it'll be, uh, I have no idea, feminine products. I don't know. Just making stuff up. Sure. But whatever it might be. I mean, you know, look, people always overreact to things. The system is designed to prey on their weakness and on their fear. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would be willing to bet this is going to end sooner. But if it doesn't, all it's going to do is give the Fed more opportunity to throw, to, to throw cash at something, which is, of course, their end game. Make the people suffer, cre create a state of fear, paralyze them via the mechanism. Fear is paralyzing. People don't know what to do. They don't know what to think. Um, and that's really, I mean, think about it, bro. If we don't come together, people, if we don't unite with your neighbors and people around you right now, when this stuff hits the fan and it's going to, let's say Greg is right, and we get a locking up of the system, the credit markets freeze up, what are we going to do? We're going to need each other, period. Um, you think you can have access to your dollars or your euros or even your Bitcoin for that matter or anything? No, it's you will have zero access to any of that. Um, the system will start. You, you, the stores will be cleaned out so fast by looters, by everybody else you can dream about. There'll be nothing, unfortunately. And uh, we need each other, man. I mean, if there's one thing that we need, all we need is love. True, right? We need each other. We need to have uh, we need to have our, our our head in the right spot. We need to be prepared spiritually, mentally, physically, everything. Because I can't see, and I hope I'm wrong on this, out of a worst case scenario unfolding. It just looks to me that that's where we've been going for years. You just got to connect the dots a little bit. Maybe something will change. Maybe something will intervene. I don't know. But if we stay on this current pathway. There's no way out of a worst case scenario and a credit freeze or locking up other system and people are going to, the outcry is going to be global. Um, and of course, what are they going to do? Okay, guys, here's your problem. Guess what? We have a solution for you. It's unbelievable. I mean, yeah. it's, and, and people will accept anything when people are that desperate and that's what they want. They mm -hmm. want us on our knees. We're not going to get down on our knees except before God, right? That's exactly. But that's yeah. where they want us. And then they're going to say, oh, don't worry about it. We got you covered after this pandemonium in the streets. I sincerely believe, and I've been saying this for years, and I'm going to just say it again. I, I believe they want to vastly reduce the population in this world. Um, do. Because it's all about control. Right. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I, I think we kind of covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to show you one quick slide. We, you know, we got to get the first two commandments right, Greg. Love, love the Lord, Jesus, Shul HaMashiach first. And then love one another. I think we get those two right. Everything else right sizes. And I know you would agree with that. So I want to show you this. I sent you this slide before Kim Clement, just for your audience to see. And we believe that this is dealing with the Middle East, tying that together as a nice bow. And one of the countries, to your point, that we believe is going to break away from said matrix. So let me see if I can uh, share this with you. If you just bear with me a second. Let I me know see something. There you go. Okay. Okay. So this is Kim Clement's prophecy. This is going back July 18th, 2015. So way before Trump was even, you know, or before he was coming in, the whole thing. Here we go. There'll be a break in the financial system in the Middle East. The denial. And many shall say, why? Why now? The gods have been things seen at their worst. I shall bring it forth and I shall free them up. There shall be a prosperity in a place where you least expect it. The prayer 
prayers of my people in Iran and the prayers of my Christian people that come forth from Iraq and from Palestine. Yes, Palestine. And even those regions, I will hear their prayers and I will do something marvelous and will affect this nation, says the Lord. You put your hand in the hand of Iran, I say to you, I will remove the hand of America out of the hand of Iran, says the Lord. And I will free up my people for their promise is yes and amen. Yes and amen. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you. I thought that was powerful. So. Well, let me say this. I had a very difficult time hearing that. What I did see, I heard some of it, and I saw a very passionate man. And okay. I like to see people with passion, man. Uh, yeah. I'm a passion. I go crazy, man. You've seen me on my video. Sometimes yeah. I, I like my. I feel like my blood, my blood pressure is going up so high, my eyeballs are going to pop out on screen. <laughs> you know, because you know when you see things that are just so clear, like that guy right there. I'm mm -hmm. sure you you took a measure of his blood pressure. It probably was oh, in yeah. the stratosphere. You know, when you see things that just seem so clear and so real to you and you you and you just cannot understand why other people can't see it, mm -hmm. it is a frustrating thing. Now, you seem like a pretty cool, calm and collected dude. And I wish I was more like you. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> On uh, camera. But, you know, I don't, me, I, I, uh, I get bent out of shape a little bit. Anyway, uh, dude, great talk. I really yeah. hope that uh, appreciate you brother. pay attention to this stuff, man. I really, really do. And it's just this is so much bigger than yeah. the financial markets and what I, I, me, I like this stuff because I find it challenging and I like to study what's happening. I want to, I just put all this stuff together all the time. I, I always like to challenge myself and, um, and then whatever I come up with, I'd like to share with people and I want their opinions on it. Like, I don't care about people. If people have an opposite view than me or, or you, they, I, I hope they would comment and say, listen, guys, I see what you're seeing, maybe to a certain degree, or maybe I don't. Let's get a dialogue going on here, right? Man, because we're stronger together. Makes yes. sense. Yeah, it's an opportunity to connect, and I'll I'll send you the Kim comment so you can share with your audience, you know, full with this with the audio. Um, Greg, buddy, as always, thanks for joining us, brother. We really appreciate your time and insight, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care and God bless. You too, bro. Thank you.